Good morning and welcome to this service. It's actually the last of a series of services based on recorded material from our archives, from services that have taken place here and been recorded over the past 18 months. Uh, next week, uh, the first Sunday in September, we hope that we'll return to live streaming our services and we hope you'll still be joining us from home. Uh, but even though this service is not uh, being uh, joined in live, as it were, nevertheless, I hope that you will join in uh, and worship God in spirit and in truth. As a matter of fact, some of the material uh, comes from different stages uh, at different points last year, 2020, including what I think might have been our very first or at most our second Sunday after the first lockdown. So the, the second time that we ever did one of these uh, recorded services. And it was actually Palm Sunday. And the reason for that, that I, the reason I've chosen that is that uh, today, 29th of August, 2021, in church, live in church, we're having the third and final instalment of our series on animals in the Bible. And guess what? Today's animal is the donkey. So I think we'll probably see what the connection is with the Palm Sunday story. And I hope that uh, you'll find something really helpful in all of that, as well as in the hymns and the prayers and so on. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read the Bible reading for Palm Sunday. I'm going to uh, read that here at the outset for the simple reason that it was very badly recorded uh, back in those early days and I don't think it's really very clear. So rather than play that as a recording, I'm going to read it now and then we'll have our uh, opening prayer and I'll lead us into our first hymn. This is from Matthew chapter 21. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And just before we continue, I'll just tell you that uh, the sermon that's being preached in church today, 29th of August, will be recorded and made available on YouTube later the same day. And I hope perhaps you'd like to hear what I've got to say about the donkey and its place in the Bible story and not just on Palm Sunday. Well, in a moment, we've got our first hymn, which is To God Be the Glory. But first, let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you have created all things, the beauty of creation in plants, in mountains, and in the animal kingdom too. But we thank you that you've created us, and that you've created us not only in your image, but to have a relationship with you, a friendship. 
Thank you that that friendship is restored in Christ and that our relationship with you involves us in coming to you, not only in sorrow for our sins, but also in praise and thanksgiving. We pray that that may be the hallmark of our worship this morning. Amen. Yes, we come to God in praise and worship because he's a glorious God, but we also come to him in confession because he's a holy God and we continually fall short ourselves of that holiness. So let's acknowledge that together in our prayer of confession. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. O King, enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness, we cry to you to take our guilt away, and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Palm Sunday. What pictures come to mind? Well, for many, 
the first thought will be of palm trees, or rather, their branches and leaves. As we heard in the reading, Jesus' followers and fans waved these great leaves like flags and threw them down onto the road in his path like a carpet. The palm was a symbol of royalty, and these people were, quite noisily and openly, proclaiming Jesus as their king. Not a very sensible thing to do, you might think, under the watchful gaze of the occupying Romans, who ruled with an iron fist. Or maybe, maybe you think of the donkey. Over the years, I've had a few Palm Sunday services where a real-life donkey, usually but not always kept in the churchyard outside, was part of the proceedings. Whereas in the Christmas story, there's no mention of a donkey, on this day, the Bible makes a point of describing not only the beast on which Jesus rode into Jerusalem, but even the means by which the disciples acquired it. As the writer Matthew comments, this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. Say to Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So even by riding this apparently humble beast, Jesus is making a startling claim. The crowds are right. That king for whom you have long been waiting, whom the prophets foretold, I am he. Perhaps the watching Romans would not pick up on this, but the high priest and his cronies certainly would. And they too were powerful people whom you would be unwise to antagonize. But as we read this familiar story once again, one other image comes to mind, although it's not once mentioned. Looming like a large black cloud over the whole scene, in our minds, and I'm sure in Jesus' mind too, is the cross. As Jesus enters Jerusalem, he already knows that it is not to take up an earthly throne. However hard the crowds shout, Hosanna to the Son, the descendant of the great King David. Jesus knows, as we will remember on Friday, that the only place he will be enthroned is on that terrible execution machine, the most extreme expression of the Roman's iron fist, the cross. I wonder if the crowd's adulation already rang hollow in his ears as he contemplated what lay ahead. He knew also, perhaps, that in the coming days some in the crowd would fall away, would turn on him, would shout equally loudly for his tortuous death. Surely, as human as we are, the long shadow cast by the cross played on Jesus' mind even as he received and acknowledged the joy, love and worship of the crowd. And you don't need me to remind you that we too are living under a dark cloud, a long shadow cast by the coronavirus. Even as we sing our songs of praise today, concern for what is ahead of us and indeed all around us will not be far from our minds. But if Jesus could see the cross bearing down on him, he could also glimpse past it. Even as you might just glimpse white Nancy behind me here, at the victory of the resurrection which would follow. It's that victory which, if it does not dispel the shadow, robs it of its power. Holy Week is a time for remembering, retelling, rehearing the terrible, amazing story of the cross. My prayer is that our current experience will help us to appreciate that story more deeply and to find in it new meaning and a new hope and faith in Jesus. 
for as those same prophets also wrote, Surely he took up our pain, and he bore our suffering. Now let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now Pam Cook is going to lead our prayers. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonder and beauty of your creation with its incredible variety and never-ending surprises. We are constantly learning more about our world and we never cease to be amazed at all that you have made. As we learn more about the interconnectedness between different aspects of your creation, we have to acknowledge our failure to value and care for our world as we should. Help us to understand the cumulative effects of our day-to-day -day behavior and decisions, particularly on those in disadvantaged countries and communities around the world. As we reflect on the palm crosses we traditionally use in our Palm Sunday services, we also remember the people of the Masasi region of Tanzania who have been making them for over 50 years to supplement their meagre income. Thank you that from the simple but inspired idea of a British vicar working there at the time, this enterprise has continued to flourish and to benefit the community. We thank you for the interconnectedness which binds us together as the body of Christ here in Potrigley and of your worldwide church. Echoing Paul's prayer for the church at Ephesus, we ask that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith and that we would be rooted and established in love for you and for one another. May our faith be deepened as we experience your love and grow in our knowledge of you so that we can share and demonstrate the powerful message of that first Easter with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are called to share the good news of the gospel in other countries in various ways, including health education and medical care, Bible translation, improving agriculture, sanitation and housing, to name just a few. May they too be rooted and grounded in love and remain close to you as they serve your people. And may their witness and message be received in hearts that have been softened and prepared by your Holy Spirit. We commit to you the missionaries our church supports, the Maclean's in Bangkok and the Fazakalis who are normally based in Malawi but are in the UK at present. Please keep Johnny and Anne, Megumi and Helen and their children in your care and close to you so that they can know your will for them and make appropriate decisions in line with your plans for them over the coming months. We intercede for the many people living under the rule of corrupt leaders and harsh regimes, which is difficult enough in usual times but made even worse due to the impact of COVID-19. When life has been such a struggle for so long, and services and resources have been severely limited, dealing with yet another catastrophe has been devastating or fatal for so many. We struggle to grasp the magnitude of the day-to-day -day reality of life in so many countries at present, but please prompt us to continue to support them in prayer and to entrust them to your eternal care and love. Help us not to shy away from such incomprehensible problems but to remember again our global connections and responsibilities. May we be generous in our giving to the organisations that our church supports, which work in so many challenging countries. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local communities and the many organisations and activities that are normally such an important part of our lives. Thank you for the way so many have creatively adapted to the restrictions in place over the past year, continuing to help and support people. Please watch over the staff in our local medical and hospital services and give strength and patience to those who are feeling exhausted and stressed by the pressures and extra demands on them. We also think of the children and the staff in our local schools and ask that you would help them to know that they can bring all their worries and concerns to you and that they are precious to you. As we were so poignantly reminded on Tuesday, so many people are still grieving the loss of friends and family and have not had the opportunity to say their goodbyes or to mark their loss in the usual ways. Please bring comfort and healing to them at this time. We commit these spoken prayers and the unspoken prayers of our hearts to you, trusting you to answer them in your perfect timing and according to your purposes for us all. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as Jesus taught us, so we all pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning, both here in church and also at home. And as we come to the end of our service, we have a special blessing for this Holy Week, this Passion Tide. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. 
Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you to remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.